Welcome to the Cherry Pearls podcast. I'm trying to put my phone down. Um, we are a knitting and spinning, or a knitting fiber podcast, um, coming to you every other week, just about, uh, from outside New Orleans, Louisiana, and we are super glad that you're here with us today. Uh, this is going to be episode 90, so we're closing in on 100. Yep, we are. We're going to do something special for 100? Probably. Maybe. If there's something that you'd like us to do, like an ask us get anything, an AMA sort of thing, or whatever, just let us know, because I'm curious to see if there's something that y'all want to see. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. So, um, I am Robin. I'm Mary. And this is Hagrid. Um, y'all may remember him uh, from a while ago. He hasn't been on in a while, but he's... I think he's closing in on seven months. Yeah, he's a big boy now. Y'all may not recognize him. Um, yeah, I just woke him up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but some people would like to um, ask us if they could see him, since y'all saw him as a baby. So yeah, he may be wanting to go. If y'all want, to, I'll, I'll just show him real quick. So <laughs> he's gotten to be really big, and he has this. Well, let's get your feet. This look at this tail. <laughs> this is a magnificent tail. Beautiful. And we love this tail because this tail is is magnificent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He woke him up. He did. He's, he's, he's indignant that he got woken yeah, up. Yeah, and then I accidentally pulled his whiskers. Yeah. Um, so enough cat talk. Um, Never enough cat talk. You can find me as Teeny Button on Instagram and Ravelry, and you can find my yarn at teenybuttonstudio.com. On Ravelry, I am Snip and Full, on, uh, and on Instagram, I am Cherry Pearls Mary. And Hagrid actually has a hashtag on Instagram. It is help, Helpful Hagrid. Helpful Hagrid. Okay, ha- hashtag Helpful Hagrid, if you'd like to see pictures of him. Being helpful. Being helpful. <laughs> um, we have a podcast group. It'll be linked in the down bar. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, below. That's where you can find links to everything that we're going to talk about, as well as um, our giveaway threads and our knit-along threads and all that good stuff. So we're going to go into um, our knit-along that concluded at the end of last month. So um, just roll on through. Well, can I say one thing? Yeah. Um, if you have any questions about what we've shown on the podcast, like... Um, some socks or a shawl or something that we've talked about, maybe a website or something, go into the podcast group and check our show notes because we list everything there with links um, and everything. So uh, a lot of times all your questions can be answered there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not super great at replying to YouTube comments as they pop up, so um, that may get you a quicker answer. Yeah. So um, Hagrid had to leave because he had business elsewhere. Yeah, you wanted to. <laughs> but um, we are about to announce some winners for our knit-along that just concluded. So um, we had the uh, One Cal to Rule Them All that ended on September 30th, and that was co-hosted um, with us and Stephanie of the Yarn Nerd Podcast. Uh, and the purpose of the knit-along was just to knit something Lord of the Rings inspired. So um, we have pulled a winner for a physical prize from the Finished Objects thread and a winner for a pattern prize from the Chatter thread. Yes. So... Actually, let me. You want to announce the um, chatter sure. thread winner? So, um, usually in the chatter thread, we choose a winner um, of, of all the people who spoke um, in that thread, uh, discounting Robin and I. And that person is the winner of a $7 pattern on Ravelry. And the person who wins that prize is Stella Bella Quilts. So, Stella Bella Quilts, if you will contact me um, and let me know what pattern you would like on Ravelry that is $7 or less, we will gift that pattern to you. Yay! Congratulations. I like doing it this way because that way people get the exact pattern that they want or something on the wish list or whatever. So um, for our physical prize, we put together a little bitty prize package. So um, the yarn, this is a skein of Hot Socks Stripes, which is a um, German sock yarn. That's German, right? Pretty sure that's German. Looks Germany. Yeah, I think I've never actually used this, but it's it feels very hard wearing, kind of like a Regia. Yeah, it does feel like or a an Regia. opal. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's hot sock stripes, and the color is six fourteen, and I thought it was very Lord of the Ringsy. This was donated to us by a wonderful podcast viewer, so Michelle. Thank you. She sent us three packages of wonderful yarn um, to give away as podcast Yay. prizes. So thank you, Michelle. Um, along with this yarn, we will be including this cute notebook. It says Secret Garden on it, and I was thinking Sam Gamgee, Samwise Gamgee, is a gardener, so kind of fits with the Lord of the Rings theme. And then here are some stitch markers. These are donated by uh, Nitty by Nature, and I thought they went with the garden theme as well. 
So our winner will receive all of this beautiful prize package. Yes. And our winner was Min Min Leah. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, she knit a pair of smog socks in um, very autumnal yellows and oranges yeah, and Yeah, they reds. were beautiful. Um, I think she was post number three. Yeah. So if you go back and you look, um, that was her um, beautiful finished Yay. object. So, so congratulations. Um, please get in touch with either of us. Take a pic, Snip and Fool, or a Teeny Button on Ravelry, and got, let us know your um, mailing address, and we will ship this off to you. Um, Depends on when uh, we hear from you. Yes. Uh, we will be leaving on Thursday to go to Rhinebeck, and we will not be back for almost a week. And, and then we're leaving again. And then we'll be back for a day, <laughs> and then we'll leave again, um, but coming back on the following Saturday. Yeah. So um, we will definitely get it out to you past the 28th. That's a Sunday, I think. It'll so. be out before the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, if we hear back from you <laughs> quick... We'll get it out to you either tomorrow or the following Wednesday when we're back in town. Um, other than that, it'll have to wait to go on, out on the yeah. 29th. Yeah, this month is insane. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in shop update, the shipping schedule. But um, for now, we have another need along to talk about. Yes, um, this is our second annual make-along. It is for C is for caring make-along. And all that we ask you to do for this make-along is to make something that you would give to a cancer patient, that, that you would donate to a cancer patient or give to a cancer patient. Um, whips are included, and um, you can definitely double dip in any other, um, you know, uh, make-alongs, knit-alongs, crochet-alongs, whatever alongs that you would like to participate in. Um, as usual, you have to be a member of the podcast group in order to be eligible for a prize. And we will be pu uh, pulling from the finished objects threads and chatter threads for prizes. Yes. Uh, we do have threads set up in the Ravelry group, so go over there. Um, the rules are posted. If you have any questions, let us know. I think that covers the the gist of it. Um, we went on a little mini rant last last episode about the snit along and my, my the purpose usual. of it. So, um, if you're interested and you haven't watched that, um, that may be something to check out. But well, um, I don't know if I'd say it was a rant. Um, people, just, yeah. Just my issues around Pete Tober. Informational um, <laughs> but speech. But it's something that we feel, at least I do, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming Robin does, something we feel very passionate about and something that we want to give back to people. Oh, I forgot to mention the Knit Along started October 1st yeah. and we'll run through November 15th. Mm -hmm. So, um, come along and join us. There's plenty of time. Yay. So, I think that's all the administrative stuff, right? I think so. So, we have some finished objects. Yes, we do. How many you get? The one? I've got two. two. You go first. Okay. So, um, I guess I will show the big one first. Um, oh. Last time uh, we podcast, I was working on my uh, Fading Point shawl. This is Fading Point by Hohi Locatelli. And I was using uh, five skeins of yarn four of which are Teeny Button Studio yarns, mm -hmm. and one was Black Elephant. So the yarns in order, this is um, Teeny Button Studio. I'll go ahead and use all of the Teeny Button Studio ones first. So this is Mullah Grubs, and then that morphs into this area right here, which is Death Day Party, which um, fades into Audubon, which fades into the Black Elephant. <laughs> sea Glass. Which is sea glass, yeah. but I was going to do all yours oh. first. But I should really do them in order. <laughs> and then the last one is uh, Teeny Button Studio, the Owlery. I absolutely loved knitting this. Is this um, the right side? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, as usual, I love knitting um, Hokies patterns. So um, here it is. It's huge. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it it um, turned out exactly as I wanted it. Did you measure it? Um, I meant to, um, but Hagrid came in, and I was afraid he was going to sharpen his claws on it, So, oh, and then he was picky. chewing on the T-pin, so I went ahead and pulled it out. I have not gotten around to measuring it, but I will, and I will um, list um, the measurements that I blocked it out to, as well as what the final gram weight of it mm. is. Um, but I love it. Um, this is what I will be bringing um, and wearing on Rhinebeck Saturday, instead of my sweater, since I do not love my sweater. <laughs> So, wait, it is backwards. No, it's not. Yep, here's an end. No, this is the front. Well, then I must have... You wove the end on I the wrong side. I put it in on Oops. the wrong side. Oops. Right. You'll never be able to see that again. It's not noticeable. I hope that's the only one. What an idiot. Oops. It happens. So, anyway, um, yeah, 
love it, love it, love it. I would recommend this um, to anyone. It was fun to knit. I had a great time. There's another end I wove on the wrong side. I cannot believe it. Here's one I didn't do. No, that's your pants. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, you did all of them on the wrong side. I on think the right I, side. I think I did that whole side on the wrong side. Because when You, I, you won't I be able to it. notice it whenever it's on. No, but I'll know it's there, so I'll have to fix that. Whoops. That's what the crochet hook is for. Yep. So anyway, I love it. It turned out perfect, and I would knit it again. I love this pattern. Yep. I'm, I'm really into fades lately. This is my first fade. I'm okay with the fade. I just really like the pattern. And it was just a starting point. It was really easy to, well, to me, they're very similar. <laughs> um, so I probably wouldn't do the fade, the turning point because they're so similar in look to me. But I really did enjoy um, the other uh, Hohe pattern that I loved knitting was um, the three color cashmere shawl, which was an awful lot of fun to knit as yeah. well. So, one. you know, this is the font. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's, that can't be right, because look at the look at the garter ridges. The garter ridges, this is the right side. I don't know. No, it's, I'm positive. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to have a discussion about this later. <laughs> well. Huh. I did do it right. I but did then, do it but right. Then, but then why does, why do you change... That's just the way it is. Oh, okay. That's just the way it is. So I did do it right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking that whenever you do the garter ridges, you want, you don't, I don't know how to explain it. My brain. I'm just telling you, I follow the pattern. <laughs> I didn't do it. It looks good. It doesn't I matter. Didn't, I didn't do any mods. Uh, a lot of times I'll do mods, but I did not do any mods and I pretty much followed it. So this means it's reversible. So you can wear it either way you want. Well, it's reversible until you look at the ends. <laughs> but... I will get an awful lot of wear out of this, and I'm looking forward to wearing this up I in love the this. Neck. I love this. I yep. love it. Yep. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, well, since you're going to bring that, I'm not going to bring my Impressionist's Mystery Knit Along I mean, because it's, it's the it's, same colors. It's a big a big baby. Yeah. So, I'll put so that I have a finished object to share. I have not blocked this yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to do redo the neckline or not. But I have a little baby sweater. Super cute. Look how tiny it is. It is tiny. Human beings are this small. I can't believe it. I don't have a lot of babies I've ever been around, so I assume this is baby sized. I follow the pattern. I mean, babies can be smaller than that. Yeah, no, I know. But, um, little arms. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is the Stacked Staghorn Baby Sweater. Easy enough. Uh, that is by Stacy Cilia. Oh, it's killing me. I love that. It's so funny. Um, and I knit this out of Knit Picks Swish DK. Yeah, Swish DK, and the colorway is Wonderland Heather. And um, it's knit bottom up. So I think I was halfway through the body whenever I showed y'all last time. Um, so you're thinking about taking out the collar? I'm not 100% sure. I don't think it's going to bother anyone but me ever. Um, the pattern is written, it's a free pattern, but it's written with a 4x4 rib on the bottom. How stretchy is that neck? Oh, it's pretty stretchy. Okay. Babies have big heads. Yeah. Well, it's written with a four by four rib on the bottom, and I'm, I didn't read it, and I just started with the two by two, and by the time I realized, I was already on the body, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like going back and doing the ribbing again. But the reason why it's done by four by four is so it matches the neckline, which is also done in a four by four, and there's decreases hidden in the pearl bits of the rib, mm -hmm. so it looks more seamless than it than if you did not have those. So I did a two by two, and then I kind of put the decreases in the pearl sections. I mean, it really doesn't look bad. I don't think you can tell. Yeah, I think it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it then. Um, and then the sleeves, I also did a two by two. So that's really the only modification I did. Um, I don't know what was going on whenever I did this three needle lined off at the top, but I had drop stitches on both sides. Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand what, what was going through my brain. but um, I just, Well, I'm glad you caught them. Yeah, I just pulled them and wove them back in. But I still need to block this. I might just run it through the washer and the dryer and just make sure that it doesn't do anything funny. Um, just because it is for a baby. It's um, Larry's best friends are having a baby. They're expecting a little boy in February. I had to think about that for a second. So um, this is the first baby garment I've ever made. I've made booties. I've made hats. But this is the first sweater. Super cute. I love staghorn cables. Yeah, I do too. Um, They're great cam. Yeah, this great was a cables. This was a good yarn. Um, it was a tiny bit splitty, but not 
unmanageable. Um, I feel like I probably used it before, but not recently. And I thought I could get away without breaking into the third skein, but I broke into the third skein just for the last, like, two rows of ripping. Oh, that was close. Yeah, I was really hoping I wouldn't have to, so I could de-stash the last one or use it. I can still use it for something else, but... Yeah. Um, folds Color up really work cute. or something. Maybe, yeah. But it was, it was a fun knit. It was really quick. Um, and, uh, it was my... Well, not my first bottom-up sweater, but um, I knit the Tegna, which is bottom-up. It's a similar construction. I guess all, all bottom-up sweaters are similar. Um, but it's good to have a little bit of practice with how the neckline and shoulders come together and stuff. So, Cool. Yeah. Looks I fun. think it looks good. Thank you. What I you think got? they'll be excited with it. Um, I have a hat. Um, this is just my basic beanie that I knit. Um, just cast on, pull out some yarn, cast on as many stitches as I can knit to a certain length, and then do my decreases. Um, this yarn is um, Red, Hot, Red Heart Soft in teal, and um, it's, it's my car knitting, so I've got a bunch more of this in my bag in the car, and I'll be knitting some more of these, and this is just a charity hat. I like that color. I do too. I really like that color. And it's really soft. Yeah. So I have one more finished object. I have a pair of socks. Another pair of socks. So that's four pairs of socks this month almost. Yeah, four pairs of socks in the past couple weeks. Well, you had a bunch of them that were partially finished, so you finished a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are the Honey Bee Dance Socks. This is a pattern by Helen at Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. And I love them. I'm going to take this one off the blocker so you can see the pattern on the front. Um, I knit this in Teeny Button Studio Soft Sock. This is my Man's Greatest Treasure colorway, which is a Ravenclaw colorway. And I love this pattern. I love the texture on this. So that's that's pretty. It's that way. But it's got the twisted stitches on the side. And then the no, lace panel, lace that goes panel the center. and the little twisted cables, which really were pretty. a pain, but I really do like the way that they look. So... Um, I'm happy to have these finished. I did do a heel flap and gusset because I'm really feeling the heel flap and gusset lately. I just really like the look of it and I feel like it fits really well. So, um, yeah, uh, this is from her Handmade Sock Society collection. This is the third or fourth pattern. I want to say fourth. I, I think there's six total. Yeah, I don't know. Um, she just released the um, hazelnut socks, so that was the fifth. So um, there's one more to go. And this is the second one that I've made. I made one of the Magnolia socks, which was the first the first pair, and I haven't finished the second one yet. But um, I really do like her patterns. And um, now that I can do top-down socks, I have more confidence in top-down socks, I can do more of her sock patterns. So that's really good. Yeah, nothing's, nothing can be turned away now. Yeah. Because it used to be you'd filter just for a toe up. Yeah. Doors are opening <laughs> to me in the sock knitting world. So that's that's really cool. So that that's our finished objects, huh? That is it. So we have some works in progress. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, you can go first because I just have the one. Okay. So um, this is in my, look at that bag. That is the cutest. It is adorable. Uh, it's from Otterly Adorable Knits. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, and this is going to be my plain knitting. And I'm trying not to knit too much on it before we leave for Rhinebeck, but I can't help myself. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Hmm. I do have to, another. It's the same thing y'all been saying. This y'all that oh, never the ends. crossfire? Yeah, it looks similar to how it looked last Yeah, time. I've just been knitting on it, so yeah, I totally forgot yeah. I needed to bring it, but y'all okay. seen it. It looks it looks similar. Yeah. Swonker. So um I told myself, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get it started and then and then that way I can work on the bulk of it on the plane ride. Because we have how long is the how long is the plane ride? I don't know. Four? Well uh, we have a layover. Yeah, so the plane rides aren't bad. I think our layovers are about as long as the rides because yeah. On the way there, I think we go through Orlando, and on the way back, we go through Baltimore, and we have pretty lengthy layovers, so I think they're both going to be around eight hours uh, travel time, Yeah. so we'll have some downtime. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I told myself, okay, just start the toe, and look what happens. But see, you do that with striped socks. That's mm -hmm. why I love striped socks. Yeah. Like, One more stripe. One more stripe. Yeah. One more stripe. So, um, this is... Yarn, the yarn is from um, Nomadic Yarns. This is her Diagon Alley colorway, and we actually pre-ordered this on Harry Potter Day, which is uh, Harry Potter's birthday, which is July 31st. Um, we got him in recently, and you got a skein too. Yep. So 
Um, I went ahead and cast mine on because it, it screams Halloween and, and, you know, fall to me. So the pattern is Hocus Pocus Socks. That is a pattern by This Handmade Life. It is a little Hocus Pocus Socks. A little Hocus Pocus, pardon me. Um, and it's just a vanilla sock, but it has this cable detail. I don't know how well it's showing up, but it's a very complicated cable. Like, you, you cable every couple of rows. Um... But I really love it. You've knit this pattern before? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's, oh, that's right. It is a new one. Yeah, it's a new one. So um, I really am enjoying it. And it's very, very potato chippy. So um, the way that I do my striping socks that I take on trips is I um, just knit them straight up until I run out of yarn. I actually separated this into two cakes. Um, and this is my yarn hugger from Night Owl Fibers. Um, and then I just knit until I run out of yarn, basically, and then um, I'm going to cut in an afterthought heel. So I guess I guess don't knit until I run out of yarn, because then I won't have any That's what I was heel. getting ready to ask you. Are you going to make a contrast heel in that case? No. I'm, I'm, I, if I do an afterthought heel, then I do it in the same yarn, so I can make it match. Because that's the whole point of the afterthought heel for me. Um, but I'm really, obviously, it's a very enjoyable knit. I'm really really having a good time knitting it and I have my caramel apple on there stitch marker progress keeper this is from cakery bakery charms um actually I got these in the mail this week I could have shown them on stash but I didn't but you'll see that one so that is my first work in progress I have my second my second cake here oh and the yarn I said it's nomadic yarns it is her twisty sock base which is an 80 um 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon diagonally so, that is my first whip. Well, I talked about my first whip. I don't need to show my first whip. Um, I am continuing to work on the Crossfire. Um, I was out of town last week and worked on it an awful lot. Uh, so, it's continuing to um, motor along. It's just, but you've seen it, so I don't really need to show it. Yeah. Because I left it in the other room. Oops. So... Do, go ahead and do yeah, this one. Okay, so um, I cast this on last night um, as part of, um, you know, technically this would count as part of our make-along since I will be donating this to the oncology department at my doctor's office. Um, this is something else that I'm also working on um, this year is knitting the knitted knockers. So um, this is one that I started last night. I have finished the front of the knocker and I am now doing the decreases to complete the back of it. And this is um, the Knitted Knockers on Magic Loop by KnittedKnockers.org. And the yarn is uh, Cascade Yarns Ulta Pima. And there we go. And the colorway is brown. Um, it's got a number. Let's see. Where's the number? Uh, 3178. And, um, you know, they're quick and easy to do. And they don't take a lot of time, but they give a lot of love. So... I'm working on one of those, and I usually make them in pairs, so I'll start the second one as soon as that first one's done. Yay! So I have one more work in progress, and y'all haven't seen this one either, actually. I have two new works in progress this week. You knit a lot of, like, smaller sort of things. Well, I, I go back and forth. I mean, yeah. the... Well, the, the fading point's not a smaller thing. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I go back and forth. I, um, I do admit that I knit an awful lot of... Um, accessories. I, I'm, I'm more of an accessory more than knitter I am, for sure. Yeah. Um, I've only knit the one garment, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is my last, second and last whip. This is the Baubles Shawl. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And it's just a baby. It's also kind of bunched up a little bit, but you get the idea. So um, it is a three color shawl. I'm just working with the first two right now. So these are all La Bienna May. Um, this one is, um, the, it's their Merino single space. So this one is Sari, S-A-R-I. This one is Autumn O. Rhinebeck. I think I'm saying that right. This was the Indian Tangled colorway from last year. And then my third color is going to be this skein. And this is their colorway Isle of Iran. So I think they look very nice together. Yeah, those will look great. The issue... This has got those colors in it. Well, the issue that I'm having is that I ordered these two skeins from Indie Untangled at the same time, but it's obvious that this one has a lot more speckles than this one. Oh, you can't really tell on camera, but I promise this one is like... Well, you speckled. could tell when they were skeined up. Yeah. I mean, in Hanks. Yeah. So, um, 
that's my problem is that whenever you're knitting the stripes you're already alternating every other row so I can't alternate the two grays because then I'll have to alternate every every That'd eight be a rows. Big, that's a lot rows. of carrying yarn. Yeah. So what I decided to do is this. I don't have the pattern, a physical copy of the pattern, but the way that it's that it's done is you do the stripes and then the syncopated brioche, which is this brioche section right here, and then there's a lace section, and then there's another brioche section with the with the blue color and then another lace section, and then another brioche section with the pink. So I am using the less speckled skein with the other colors. And the, so in the striping and in the brioche. Yes, and the more speckled skein I'm using just for the two lace sections. Oh, I like the way you're doing that. Yeah, so I think that makes sense. I think that that'll work out, and you'll get more of the pops of color where you can really see them where they're not hidden by the other colors. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, I just I do wish that they matched a little bit closer, um, but it happens, so... This is a way to get around that. So we will see. I just started the lace. So, yeah, you can see that. I had a progress keeper on here. I don't, oh, here it is. Okay, so this is another one I got from Cakery Bakery. It's a unicorn. A unicorn macaroon. Look how cute that is. That's adorable. I really love that one. So, um, yeah, this is a really enjoyable knit so far. I've never done syncopated brioche. Just hit myself in the face. Uh, I've never done syncopated brioche, but it's really easy. Okay, it's, so what's syncopated brioche? the colors the dominant color switches oh okay yeah yeah and it's basically I'm not I mean it's um, it's not her pattern it's a technique but basically you just do the brioche the opposite way like you knit the ones that you are slipping kind of oh, cool. so it's, it's self-explanatory if you if you done brioche yeah, it makes if, sense. I mean the pattern that you would have that in would tell you how to do it yeah okay yeah so um that is my second whip and I I think I might leave this one at home Whenever we go on our trip, just because I have all four skeins and it's just a little bit of a bulkier kind of project well, to take along. I would hate for you to have to pull out a bunch of brioche if you drop something, like if you get bombed yeah. or just, I mean, I don't know. To me, brioche may not be something that you want to travel with Yeah, if you're going to be moving around a lot. Yeah. Well, I did the entire first half of the brioche section and then realized that I wasn't decreasing like I should have been, so I had an extra, like, 12 stitches. So, and in brioche, you can't hide that. So, so you had to rip that I out. ripped it out back to the garter section. But um, it's fine. It looks good now, and I, I will pay attention in the future. This pattern has charts. I know I've said in the past Andrea Mowry doesn't have charts in some of her patterns, but this one has charts for everything, so that's awesome. Well, I think maybe she, when she first started out, didn't have as many, but maybe she's going back and putting charts in those and, and doing updates. I don't know, but um, this is one of her recent ones, and there's lots and lots of charts, so that's really good. That makes you happy. Yes. Uh, throw me something, mister. Yeah. I'll go first. We got some things thrown at us. We did, or at least I threw them at myself. <laughs> so um, the first thing I received is my skein of the Teeny Button Studio Soft Sock live colorfully uh, sock set. Um, this is um, all the colors that you typically find in Kate Spade's logo. And Robin um, did this mini skein set earlier this year um, after Kate Spade died. Um, she um, created this set so yeah. that she could make donations to a certain call to a certain charity. Yeah. Um, whenever I did them originally, um, all of the money, 100% of the money went to the American Society for um, Suicide Prevention. And I did another round this week. And so from that round, $5 from each skein went to the American Society for Suicide Prevention. So um, I'm sold out of those right now. Um, but you'll probably have an I'll have them again next year. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll continue to do them, um, you know, throughout the Theoretically. year. Um, just keep checking if you're interested, but yeah. I'm excited to get mine. Yay! So I have that, and the second Throw Me Something Mister I got this week, it's not as neat as it used to be because Pearl came in and got really excited about finding a uh, gobstopper of yarn. She loves Rocky Horror. So this is the Rocky Horror Picture Show Mystery Skein Club for 2018. This colorway is Sweet Transvestite. What's, what base is that? Um, this is on her... Matte sock, sock base, and seventy-five twenty-five, and then um, it comes with a coordinating mini. So this colorway is sweet transvestite. If you know the song "Sweet Transvestite," um, you might get a kick out of the name that she's come up with her coordinating mini. It is called "One Hell of a Lover." So um, this is in her Stellina or Shimmer base, 
and that's for coordinating heels and toes. That looks really good together. I know. Don't they look good together? I have one of her Welcome to Night Vale skeins, and that's going to be Larry's Christmas socks. And this also came with it, too. So you had the um, beautiful picture of Rocky, or um, Tim is... Uh, Frank I love Frankenfurter. Why did I say Rocky? <laughs> this is Frankenfurter. I'm a huge Tim Curry fan, as well as Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. Um, this was out back when I was in high school slash college, so I've seen it tons and tons of times. <laughs> Um, I never dressed up, but I did bring props, and it came with a coordinating pin <laughs> of Frank in Furter. Why is it spinning on me? So there's Frank, and then it comes with a so cute some lips for the Progress Keeper, and the <laughs> lips are what you see at the very Oops. beginning when it's singing the theme song. Larry's never seen it. <sighs> I know. It's almost like you and not getting it, not seeing all the Star Wars. Um, I think everybody um, would get a kick out of this. Yeah, um, this is brilliant. It's very um, she did a great job. I didn't know that she did this every year. I um, found out about it, I guess, in June and continually stalked her site and messaged her a couple of times <laughs> to find out when she was doing this. And as soon as I saw that she had listed, uh, posted on Instagram that she's getting ready to open up the pre-orders, I jumped on it because I, I wish love, I love, love, love Rocky Horror Picture Show. I wish I got one. And now. Tim, please forgive me for calling your character Rocky. Oops. It's okay. Because no, he, Rocky, mm, but, <laughs> but Frankenfurter. Oh yeah. It's very campy. We love. Oh, it's camp. excellent. We love some. Camp. It's excellent. So I had. One thing uh, thrown at me this week. So well, it was one thing that turned into two. It, it did, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think I think she's ten ten studio. It's one zero one zero. I'm not sure if it's one zero one zero or if it's supposed to be ten ten. Um, but she does. Um, I don't know if this is iron on or like screen printed bags. I think they're screen printed. So because um, it doesn't look like iron she, on, it looks like I think it's screen printed. Yeah. yeah. She had this bag last year, and I really, really wanted it, and I did not buy it because I wasn't going to Rhinebeck, but now that I'm going to Rhinebeck this year and she brought them back, I had to have it. So it says Rhinebeck or bust, and at the bottom it says New York sheep and and wool baby, and Larry and I say that to each other now, and it cracks him up every time we do it. So um, so Larry needs to go one year. He, he wants to go at some point, I think. Um, but this is the one that I ordered. She accidentally sent me... This one by mistake and told me I could keep it. So this is her one for this year. Um, and this says, I love sweater weather. And it has the year, so 2018, New York Sheep and Wool. And um, it has one stitch that's colored. And I think that that's her, um, her campaign. She calls it the rare stitch. I'm not sure exactly what it's about. Well, I think she has a child who has a rare, rare disease. disease. Yeah. And so this is to bring awareness to people who have rare disease that aren't spoken out, uh, yes. spoken about a lot, but still need recognition and still need people to know about them and and such. Yeah. So um, I might bring both to Rhinebeck. I might have people sign. I've seen some people sign bags with people that they meet at the festival, um, and the back is blank, so that's perfect for that. And this one has the year on it, so that's that may be an idea. I might do that or I might not. We'll see. Um, I'm a little bit intimidated by Rhinebeck and we leave in 36 hours like it's imminent um, yeah I've been printing stuff all day I've <laughs> been printing you know the car rental and airline and you know the hotel and tickets Indian and Indian Tangled, Tangled and, and yeah but um, I'm mostly excited I'm like I'm very excited yes I'm very yeah. excited and I have a list of things that I'd like to get. There's not anything that I'd be sad if I don't get. Um, there are things that I would love to look for, but I don't think I'm looking for any big things. Yeah. I'm just looking for things that kind of make me happy. Yeah. Um, I have a list of things that I definitely want. I want um, Shelly Can did some really cute um, stickers and pens, so I might get yeah, one of those. Yeah, those are cute. Catrinkles. Um, Catrinkles. She did a really cute, it's like a tag that you sew into your Rhinebeck sweater, and it says Rhinebeck sweater 2018. So um, my, my Butterbeer um, campsite Cardi, that's my Rhinebeck sweater. So um, if you see me, if you see somebody in a in a yellow uh, campsite uh, campsite cardigan, that's me. Well, could be um, you. Could be me. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I'm the only one who made one in yellow. Maybe not. Um, what else? I had a whole list. 
Um, I'm, I might get the La Bien Aime, um in the Untangled colorway if they have any left. No, we get there. We're, we're in the five to seven slot. Yeah, off our Indie Untangled. Yeah, so um, we're going to be there a little bit later. Um, so I'll, I'm not sure what they'll have left, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to go look at um, Viola and the Moon at their yarn because their yarn's hard to get. And I know she has a book that's coming out soon. Um, Knits About Winter, I think. Um, so I, if she has the books, I might want to peruse that. But I'm thinking about getting a sweater quantity. Um, and she has a Polworth alpaca base that's intriguing, so I might go take a look and see what she has um, for that. Um, and then at Rhinebeck, officially I want to hit Owl for sure and Miss Babs and Jenny the Potter. But um, other than that, I'm just going to look. I might get some Christmas presents and soaps and lotions and food and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking for little things like... Maybe some cool scissors, mm -hmm. notions, or, or neat notion, um, lotions or soaps. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it, yeah. it grabs me. Um, cat toys. I heard, <laughs> I heard there's somebody who sells cat toys. We, we ones. She makes stitch markers that are like cats and dogs and little animals and stuff. So I'm gonna go look at her stuff. Yeah, I'm just really. I want to people watch. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see the leaping llamas. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to go into the areas where the animals are and, and see the all the sheep and the alpaca and the llamas. And the puppies. And the puppies. Um, I want to go check out all the cool food, stu food stuff because mm -hmm. Philip says if there's any kind of sausage, mm -hmm. he'd want that. Yeah. I'm, um, not a, I'm not a lamb person. I don't eat lamb, but um, I would eat an apple cider donut or two. Or I don't know if I'm going to brave lines at Rhinebeck for that. Um, I we did. had them in New York. Yeah. yeah. But I did print out, there's a listing that somebody posted in the Rhinebeck group, or a couple of sites in the Rhinebeck group on Ravelry, of other places that offer cider donuts. Mm -hmm. So I may get those outside of yeah. the actual fairgrounds. So I, I do plan to get them sometime during the time we're there. Yeah. Just maybe not, I, I don't really know if I won't feel like wasting shopping time standing in line. Yeah. Well, Standing in line to get food in terms of standing in line to get yarn. I know which one I'd pick. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Miss Babs. Supposedly yes. they bring chocolate up and down the line somewhere. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I might get a sweater quantity for Miss Babs. I have to look. I have a couple sweaters that I've saved. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited. I'm yeah, so excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of Rhinebeck, um, we're going to move into my shop update section. So if that does not interest you, then please feel free to click away and go do something else. Um, but I am a crazy person, and I will be having an update this Friday, the 19th of October, even though I will be out of town and will not be able to ship any orders until Wednesday, and then after that will not be able to ship any orders until the following Monday. So, um, Which will be the 29th? Yes. No. Yes. That's right. Oof. That's right. <laughs> But Dad's birthday is the 27th. Yes. That's yeah. a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. That I sense. can do that math. <laughs> yeah. Um, so be warned if you order anything, basically from now until the 29th, it's going to ship the 29th. Um, well, okay. If you order something between tomorrow, which is Wednesday the 20, Wednesday the 17th, pardon me, until Tuesday the 22nd, it will ship Wednesday the 23rd. If you order anything Wednesday the 23rd through Sunday the 28th, it will ship that Monday, the 29th. And then advent calendars go out, so um, we're going to have our hands full. Yep. But um, my segue for that was, speaking of Rhinebeck, I have done a Rhinebeck collection. Um, and by collection, I mean... Just some really beautiful... Two or three colorways. Colors. Yes. So, um, so you don't really need to get them if you're only going to Rhinebeck. Yes. You would enjoy them this time of the year anyway. Yeah, I wanted to expand my selection of tonals. Um, I feel they're, they're a lot more challenging than you would think. Um, most of my more complex tonals have about 12 different colors in them. It's not just like one, you know, one open die. It, open the die and pour yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of thinking about which colors to dye in which order and the undertones and all that kind of stuff. So, um... That's something I've been wanting to do more of this year is, is tonals and colors to go with my more colorful colorways. So um, I have a little selection of some more autumnal colors. Um, some are Harry Potter. One is Harry Potter inspired, one is New Orleans inspired, and one is Rhinebeck inspired. So these are the three new ones that are tonal. So, oh my gosh. 
I dyed this one this afternoon, so it's still kind of wet, but like. Look how pretty that I can't, is. I can't handle that. Okay. So this one is uh, Treacle Toffee, which is a Harry Potter reference. So it is almost a little bit like Man's Greatest Treasure, but um, more. I think it's greener. It's, yeah, more of a yellow green undertone, and yeah. it's darker. Um, this one's on soft you sock. Have, Here it is you on, have the Man's Greatest Treasure sock. Yeah, there it is there. on solo singles. Look at the singles. They just glow. I love that. So um, that is Treacle Toffee. This one is actually a name that I am reusing that I used to use. This is wrought iron. Um, the reason I changed the formulation is because the previous wrought iron, um, the technique that I used was an intentional breaking of the dye. Um, and it looks really cool, but it's really, really hard to replicate. So It doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen, and it doesn't always distribute Break in the, the same, same way yeah. every time. So it's, it's, not it's not always repeatable. Yes. So um, this is the new wrought iron. I'm calling this a chromatic gray. Um, it is a, a more of a cool tone gray, but there's an undertone of orange. Really? I don't see orange. Mm -hmm. I see blue. It's, it's in there for sure. It's, I mean, cool. we're also in really poor lighting, but I start with orange oh, and then I, I layer thought. the purple and the blue and the gray on top of it. Um, it kind of gives it a more muted undertone because the purple and the orange are opposite, you know, complementary colors. Um, so that's wrought iron. I like that. And then this one... I can't handle how much I love this one. So this is our Rhinebeck colorway, and we have been wanting to go to Rhinebeck for how long, would you say? Since the beginning of time. A long time. <laughs> at least five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. Since we've been starting to knit seriously, so at least 10 years we've been knitting Once seriously. Once more that then, because we started knitting seriously in 2007. Yeah. So um, this colorway is called Rhinebeck at Last, which is why... You know, I named it that because we are going to be at Rhinebeck at last, and I'm so excited. It just mind you, it could be anything. It could be the color of the changing leaves. It yeah. could be the color of those yummy donuts. It could be just everything. Yeah. So just so fall. Yeah. This DK skein is mine. I'm going to cast on a pair of mitts with it probably tomorrow once it dries. Um, but this one is on soft sock. It's amazing. I love this colorway. I have, I have. I've done four dial-ups of this today, and I'm probably going to do about three more. So, um, do you know what bases you're going to have them on? Yes. Um, all three of those colors, let me pull them out. All three of these will be on soft sock, solo singles, um, lofty lace, mohair. Um, these two will be on DK. This one is on DK, but it's mine. I only have one, so y'all can't have it. Um, I have silk. Uh, my 8020 silk in these two, and I had this one on tough sock, just one skein. Um, I think that's it. You'll be doing more of these though. This one. Um, if in your next update, yeah, I might do what I might do since I know that the Rhinebeck weekend people really like to see you know themed sort of colorways. I might go ahead and do them dyed to order. I'll just do like a three or four week turnaround, which is longer than my turnaround usually is, but because I'm gonna be out of town, um, that might be what I do whenever they sell out. So hopefully um, y'all be able to get your hands on these. So those are my tonal colorways. Um, I have one more colorway that's dry. So this is a new one and actually I love those two together. So this one is Leaping Llamas, and it is a pinky sort of gray base. Another Rhinebeck reference. Another Rhinebeck reference, and there's some blue and orange and brown speckles, so Leaping Llamas. This one is on Soft Sock and one on DK. Um, I'll also have, since this is a tonal update, I have Audubon, which is an oldie bit of goodie and actually goes super well with raw iron. I love those. Those are pretty. Um, I have Dumbledore's Dressing Gown. Um, this one is on mohair. I will also have it on singles and on soft sock. And I have a little bit left of God Rest You Merry Hippogriffs that will be going into the shop. Hence why it's labeled. And then the, uh, oh, and I forgot about this one. This one is my Harry Potter Christmas colorway for this year. This is called Christmas on the Closed Ward. And it sold out, so I'm bringing it back. I have it on soft sock and on either shimmer or glimmer, one of the Stellina bases, either gold or silver, I have to double check. This one is on the silver Stellina. So um, that's what's coming back. And then making its official shop debut, I am so excited. I've been hanging on to these skeins 
for a long time. But this is a new base and I kind of want to like roll around in these skeins. They're so pretty. I'm gonna call this um, Bliss Singles. Is that's the name I came up with? I know it's not some of the names we discussed. That's fine. But um, it is a yak base. It is 65% superwash merino, 20% um, silk, and 15% yak. So it comes to me almost this kind of color. This is actually over dyed. It's a little bit more silver, less warm. And then whenever I over dye it, it gives these kind of luminous. And the halo on shades. that is like, just beautiful. Oh my god. So um, I will probably be doing this one dyed to order because this is a very, very expensive base and it's complicated to dye um, because the yak is more prone to um, felting, especially not, not whenever you're working with it, but whenever it's in the dye pots. It is a super wash, but something in the yak just wants to stick to the side of the thing, so it requires a lot of babysitting. Um, so I'm thinking the price point is going to be about $40 US. Um, I know that's a little bit pricey, but it is very expensive and very complicated to dye. It starts so, that expensive. Yeah, unfortunately. But the, it's, I mean, look at the look at the luster. Like, look at the it's beautiful. luminosity. So um, it is an overweight skein. It is 120 grams, 420 yards, I think. 520 yards, sorry. It's um, over 500 yards, I know. It's somewhere between 520 and 540. And you'll have that listed in the shop. Yes. So I have it on these five colors right now. So this, it's really fun because look, it looks slightly different. So um, this is treacle toffee. Um, this one is a shortcut to mushrooms, which y'all have seen before. Um, this one is Audubon. So here it is on soft sock compared to the yak. Um, I have rose merida, which is one of my Harry Potter colorways. And then this is wrought iron. Let me pull out my wrought iron skein. There it is. Wrought iron on the yak. Like, look how much warmer that is. Oh, well, look at the difference. Yeah, it's, it, and that's another reason, too, because, like, the formulas aren't quite the same for the yak to get it to look as close as possible. Um, but it's, I just, I can't handle. Well, there's I a difference, too, in the color of the base from start. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the base starts out like a silvery kind of brown. Whereas the base so, on the other one is like cream. a cream. Yeah. So um, that is what is going to be in the shop. I kind of, I have like six sweaters that I want to make. <laughs> so I, pardon me. need one more color then because that's five. I know. I, actually, I, I dyed, I didn't, I didn't say this. I dyed the um, Ryan Beckett last. Oh, okay. You have the last one. skein of yak. It's in the dye pot right now. It's cooling down. So um, six different colors. They're going to be dyed to order. Again, the turnaround time is going to be three to four weeks. It probably won't be that long. Um, just because whenever we get back, the only thing I have to dye is two more dye lots of the advent calendars and then I'm totally done with the advent calendars. Um, but I like to give myself a little bit more leeway, just, just in case. Um, well, you just never know when things come up. You know, yeah. you could get sick or... I had a burner you know. short out on me. Yeah. Rest in peace. Things so like that. Things it that you can't plan for. Yeah. But um, I am in love. Like, I cannot stop. I wish y'all could feel these. Like, it's like, like, I want to be tiny so I can take a nap in them. <laughs> it is, it's a single space, which isn't for everybody. That would be me. But it's for, something about singles, like the, the, sh the, the shine on them and like the, the fluff factor, like, I can't get over this space, like. I don't know if there's really a market for it, to be honest. I don't know of a whole lot of other dyers that carry this base, but I love it. And if it's, nobody buys it, beautiful. then I'll keep them all for myself, and, and it's a win-win. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I can't. I, I really can't. I wish I ways. liked singles. Because you could try. I mean, I, it's... I've tried. Because I really love those colors. I love them so much. Just just the the colors are so rich in that I base. Know. yeah. And there's like a depth of color too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you don't get on on a on a cream base. Yeah, but that's kind of what I was trying to say. Yeah, I could wax poetic about these all day, but I think I think that's all the content that we have. I don't think so too. Yeah. So if you are going to be at Ryan Beck and you see us, please, please, please come and say hi. Yes, we'd love to meet um, you. We are. I am going to try to be at the podcaster meetup. Um, you're not so sure. It depends on what we're doing at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Again, I'll be wearing the yellow Butterbeer um, 
camp sign card again. So if you see me, I will not be wearing mine. You'll be wearing your, your, be your, wearing your, my, your fading point. My fading point. If you um, see us, please come say hi. We do plan to be at the Ravelry meetup. Yeah. Um, so um, Podcaster like, meetup. Is that what, it, what did I say? Podcaster meetup. Oh, okay. That's the one at 1 o'clock on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think the Ravelry meetup is at noon. Yeah. So we we'll do. We'll be there well, somewhere. We do, yeah. But, I mean, we are always happy to meet people. So if you want to say hi, don't feel shy. Yeah. Um, because we get it, because we see people we yeah. want to say hi to, and then we spend about 30 minutes going, should I, should I say something, should I say something? And yeah. then usually what happens, especially to me, is I regret not doing yeah. it. So don't think that, that you're you know, going to come off as a creeper or that we're going to you know not like you, because we do. We love everybody. Yeah. So, um, yeah, come over and say hey. Please. I mean, and so um, I think we're planning on bringing our podcast buttons, whatever we have left. I don't think we have that many. We um, don't. But um, I would like to bring them. Yeah. So if anybody wants a button, um, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll have those until they run out. We need to get some more because we've been handing them out also at shows. But, um, yeah. There was something I was going to say, and it's gone. It's just absolutely vamoosed. Um, no, it's gone. Must not have been that important. Um, we are super excited. It's going to be awesome. Um, so, oh, I remember now. Um, we might, might vlog, maybe. Oh, yeah. We talk about doing it every time, and then we I forget. <laughs> I loved our DFW vlog because I can go back and watch it, and it's like it's not just to share with y'all; it's like a memory of our trip. Mm-hmm. Um, so I might I clear some space on my phone because I, I do all my all my vlogging and my vlogging the two vlogs I've done um, on my phone. So I think I'm gonna try to do it. It's kind of like I don't think it's a trip that we'll take every year. Oh gosh, no! But um, I'd like to have as much footage as we can. So. Yeah, I would like, you know, it's fun. I, I enjoy watching vlogs for people who went, like, you know, I know now I really want to go to Edinburgh. I think it would be so much fun. Um, I would love to go to Nitty City. Just watching everybody. I mean, I love watching vlogs. Yes. Yeah. Um, I loved watching um, Amy's vlog of SSK. And we were there. We went. So, <laughs> I mean, even the one she did the year yeah, before. Yeah. So, I love watching them. So, not only is it something for us to remember our trip from, I think it's fun if you ever think you might want to go to one of these events, it just kind of gives you something to look forward to. Maybe somebody has some good ideas or tips, or maybe you see something, hey, when I go, I want to get that too. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go with that. So I think that's it for this week. Um, we may or may not have a vlog next time, but we will record, I think, before the end of the month or the beginning of the month sometime. We plan to. Yeah. But never know. What happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't find a, a, a finished object, and we, we put it off, or, you know, my yarn isn't dry at the yeah, show. Yeah, it took you a while so. to find the baby sweater. The baby sweater was up there where it should have been, and I just, it's always in the last place you look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I don't know why people say that, because why <laughs> would you keep looking after you found it? It's the last place you look. That is the goofiest phrase. So, with that, I think we will leave you guys. We will see y'all, um, hopefully very soon, maybe we'll see some of y'all at Rhinebeck. And uh, happy knitting. Bye, everyone. Bye,